All right, so now I'm gonna bust one out on the uh, third C in the 10 Cs of survivability. The, uh, this would be cover. All right. uh, quick philosophy of use on this. Now, cover, in my interpretation, but uh, generally speaking, cover is anything, any tool, any structure that will allow you to protect your body from the elements, you know, primarily wind, rain, snow, things of that nature. What we're talking about today are kit tools that you can bring along to provide your body protection from the elements, right? Get your cover. Right, the rule of threes, right? Three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food, but generally speaking about three hours in bad weather if you can't get covered up and protect your body from the influence of that weather, you're in uh, the hurt locker for sure. So I've got my top five for you that are the primary kit that I rotate through and use in different applications, right? Like with a lot of this that I've been doing. I'm not just gonna say, right, get you a tarp or a tent, right? That's cover, true. But I wanna try to provide you guys some food for thought or some options, so if you're new to this perhaps, or even if you're just trying to go through and do some more advanced planning and prepare other kit for other scenarios, well, look at the options if you haven't, right? And uh, I'll start off with these top five real quick. So, you know, first up, see them all day every day in these uh kit videos especially for the 10 c's or bug outs and so on right one of these good old heavy duty uh thermal reflective od green type tarps right this is great you know this thermal reflection that's great for you know even in summertime you've gotten wet in the river what have you you know things are getting cold it's nighttime now reflect that fire heat back on to you with the inside lining of this tarp or even uh post this up to the sky where this reflective can be hit by the sun and provide you with another method of signal if that happens to be where your scenario is going but either way you know it's a great piece of kit super light right with not much effort and fold it up even half again that get this in my cargo pocket easily fit in a large variety of different bags everyday carry bags get home bags bob bags the list goes on right but the tarp is great and you've seen them Probably exactly like this in a lot of different videos, right? Because this is brand new out of the bag. And that's a quick point I want to make on the tarp. The tarp by itself is, a, you know, essentially a blanket. I mean, the best you can do with just that tarp is roll up in it and hope for the best. But you often hear and are given that these tarps are being meant to be turned into shelters, right? And in order to do that, you got to think about what's it going to take to rig it up. So when we're doing these videos, right, and when we're planning, the idea is we're prepping, right, preparing our kit as well for whatever the scenario is or the application that we're putting together. So when you come back to this tarp, and this is just broken down by one that I use frequently in my kit or even out in the woods, right, it is uh, the extras, right? You can't just have the tarp. That's the start. Next comes a rapid ridge line. 10 stakes for pinning out the corners. Having the corner grommets already rigged up with 550 cord ready to either pin down with a stake or add line to if I'm making a tarp way up above just to keep the weather off. But by all means, if you're gonna use the tarp as uh, the primary or in the kit where you have your tarp, don't forget about getting things rigged up ahead of time. Having it all in one complete package so you can in fact use this as a shelter Right, and provide yourself cover out there in the woods. Then after that, my second one up that I'll throw at you, again, looking at more of the survival, uh, roughing it applications in an emergency, but I'd give you these guys from Frog's Togs, right? Or anything like it, right? Inside this little pouch is uh, a complete rain suit, top with a hood and pants, so that I can cover my entire body, protected from the wind, the rain, the snow, what have you. Uh, it's also a little bit oversized, so talking snow or colder environs, there's plenty of room for adding leaves, grass, paper, whatever I can find to stuff inside it and provide myself extra thermal barriers. But it will certainly keep all the wet off, keep the wind off, keep the snow off. And if I'm really rough at it, and that's, we're talking survival, right? And the military, that was about the best you got was a Gore-Tex rain suit. And you get to curl up in that, and that's what your bivouac, that's what your, uh, survival package entailed so in a certain sort of philosophy of use in a certain application a rain suit like these frogs togs or 
outdoor research, Columbia, you name it, military, Gore-Tex, all that's rather heavy and warm, but anyways, a rain suit. If the application is, say, a get-home bag, and I want to keep moving, well, much more efficient and uh, less of a pain than a poncho, having a rain suit on makes me, if I'm moving through the woods or just moving in general, a whole lot easier. And it protects my legs, right? Ponchos are famous for covering up your upper body and then the gaps on the side and what have you. Before you know it, your pant legs are soaked or maybe even the side of your body where it got in under the poncho. So I'd say go for the rain suit, right? Go full cover for your body. And it's way more effective and efficient when it comes to trying to keep moving and still have cover from the elements, right? So another one to think of. Next up, this Swagman roll. Relatively new to me, maybe not to you, but got one as soon as I found out about them. I think it's a brilliant piece of kit, super versatile. Uh, you know, it's a little bit bulky, right? It's not going to my cargo pocket, but uh, on a decent size get home bag or EDC bag, it'll fit in there. And what it is, is, and I'm trying to see if we can get you a little picture there of the graphics. This Swagman roll all by itself represents a poncho, a wooby. Uh, for those of you who aren't former military, will be basically a blanket, right? It's insulated, provide you warmth, can be formed into a great coat, can be used as a ground cover, can be zipped up and used as a baby bag, and can also be used as an underquilt on a hammock. So the minute I saw it, I had that one and I got it. Um, and it goes in a lot of my kit configuration, right? Because it is so versatile and can do so many things. You know, not for extreme cold weather, but you could use it as an inner bag liner, right? If you don't have a military type sleep system that's layered up already, something like this would be a great inner bag or outer bag to your other sleeping bags because it is fully waterproof. Um, can't say enough about that one. That is a really great piece of kit. and gives you all those different options all in this one lightweight, albeit a little bulky package. And I would say the only downside to this is, especially here now we're talking summertime, is both with the tarp and with this, you've got no bug net, and you're on the ground where all the creepy crawlies and wigglies and all that good yeah, nasty stuff is. Right, so the next thing that I would give you as an important tool out there for survival would be a hammock. This happens to be, you know, try to hopefully get it all in shot for you. It's already rigged up, beaners on it, snake skins. It's a Hennessy hammock, okay? The Hennessy hammock, these snake skins are waterproof, so I can strap this as is to the outside of my ruck. I can easily just throw it over my shoulder and go trekking off into the woods knowing I have cover. And that being said, all right, there's a bug net that's already built in. There's already a rain fly that's built in. It's already spun up and wound up in all these uh, snake skins. And um, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, that is complete cover in a fast deployed package. You can probably get that hammock up with some, uh, you know, drill straps in like less than two minutes. But then you're up off the ground. And it might be because it is summertime and there's all the bugs, hate bugs, and things like that out in the woods you want to avoid. Could be because your woods are very uneven and there are no flat spots, but at least here east of the Mississippi, there's always plenty of trees. So slapping that up, these uh, Hennessy hammocks I think are also brilliant in the sense that they are asymmetrical lay. You lay off the center line and get almost a flat sleep. And again, the bug net is built in, rain flies already there. Pull back those snake skins after you've tied it up, deploy it, and you are good to go for cover for the night. And for anything where I'm planning and my kit is designed around being overnight for however many nights, the Hennessy and or a hammock would be my first go-to. Get me up off the ground, get me a, a good sleep, even in tremendously uneven, rocky even terrain, as long as I got my two trees. Right. I can't say enough about it. It's a great way to go super lightweight and I happen to love it with those snake skins because I can either strap it to the outside of my pack for easy access or throw it over my shoulder if I'm really running like kit so that I still have that full bivouac set to use a military phrase get me up off the ground and get me good sleep last one up can't help but mention obviously tents um, not a tent guy you can tell I ranted on about hammocks but tents definitely have their application Maybe it's because while you're out there, part of the plan, the scenario for you is that you're going to need space inside, protected, in order to craft, repair, do other things. You might have just multiple people that you want to have all in that one space. Tent I'm going to show you is a four-person deal. Um, it might be you're west of the Mississippi, or it's just tactically, practically, terrain-wise, scenario-wise, 
you're not going to string up between trees. You need to put it out in a flat space way out there in a field, say, or what have you. Uh, it might be because it's, you know, spring or fall, it's a little bit cool, and you're going to use your little alcohol stove or, uh, you know, bio light or something to cook inside the tent. That's something you dang sure aren't really going to do well in a hammock. All right, so I'll give you that. But the thing I got to say is, and this, like I say, is a four-person tent. So the scenario that I've got this standing by for is when I've got either the kids, the dogs, multiple people with me who I know I literally need a nice protected micro environment so I can craft and repair, even cook or what have you. Just multiple people need to be able to bivouac all at the same time. But way bigger, way bulkier, way more vulnerable in the sense that, you know, you lose, break one of those poles, right? They all have, you've seen them before if you haven't, those dome tents have all those little poles. You lose one of those, you break one of those. Yeah, you can fabricate something out of the woods, but just not a good day, right? But I don't want to just diss tents, right? Definitely have their application, and I've got mine. Might be because multiple people, the type of terrain I'm going after, or what I intend to do while I'm out on the terrain where I want a protected micro environment in which to do it. So there's my little rundown, my top five pieces of kit. So starting from a simple tarp of any kind, but love those survival blanket type tarps running up through to the swagmen, the frogs togs for more of a versatile on the move application and so forth, still traveling light, freezing at night, onto where you're planning for extended stay and you need a good rest and good cover while out on those extended stays in the woods or extended survival or emergency situations. So plus up to hammocks, tents, you know, whatever you're choosing. And there's a lot of great hammocks out there. Personally, love those Hennessy hammocks, war bonnets, Eno. There's a lot of great tent, uh, hammock companies out there, as well as tents. You know, REI has some really great smaller, lightweight one or two man tents if that's more your thing. But there's my top five. Quick rundown that uh, should cover down on a great many scenarios where you can use them in combination or individually for your planning for your survival emergency scenarios where the 10 C's come to play. Uh, more to follow.